Welcome to the SOPI tutorial session 5. So in this tutorial, we'll be looking into the advanced scripting using the Groovy in depth. And we will be using only one single assertion using Groovy, replacing all other conventional assertions. Okay. So let's get started. Okay, so as of now we have been using those uh, assertion uh, X query match, X path match, and so valid SOP response and contents, uh, not contents, uh, valid HTTP status code and uh, is it a soap fault or schema complex? All this kind of assertion, okay. But uh, uh, for a single test script, you might be having uh, a set of test steps. Uh, I mean, you can have at least four or five, uh, more than five test steps. And for each and every test step, if we, I mean, if we include I mean, this, uh, all these kind of assertions for each and every step, if I include as a six and seven assertion, so for uh, five steps, there would be around. Uh, 30 assertions. So there will be 30 assertions for a single script. So that is not feasible, right? I mean, so if if uh, if you if some test script or test step contain a more than 10 step, and I need to verify all these things, uh, and I will be using assertions, uh, <coughs> XPath, X query match, SOAP response, valid SOAP, uh, is it a SOAP fault or not? Uh, then valid HTTP status code. And then normal uh, security information disclosure, all this kind of at least seven or eight assertion I will be using. So for around ten steps, I will be using seventy assertion. So for designing a single script, I need to use seventy assertion. So that will be very much hectic. So another option we can we are we are having that uh, we need to, we can use the Groovy script assertions that is very much useful. Uh, it is you can use it inside a as a test script assertion or you can just include it as a test step also groovy script okay groovy script you can also use. so inside i just adding a step as a groovy, groovy script and uh, passing the executing the relevant test steps only utilizing the uh, particular test environment so that will come i will come later uh, let me tell you first uh, doing assertion using the groovy so i will be covering xpath assertions x query assertions valid soap response or not uh, then uh, sla timeout assertions all those kind of assertions and contain not contain http response only inside a single script assertions that is groovy script assertions one thing guys i forgot to tell you that uh, using xpath assertions you can also do it like well like you can use uh, multiple xpath uh, using and command okay? so it will try to match multiple xpath using and Okay, so simply um, if I run this, uh, uh, so we can see this is the response I'm getting, and uh, X path is coming as a true. Uh, Groovy script assertion failed. Why? Because uh, Groovy script I have mentioned I have written a script for SLA timeout. That timeout has been occurred. Deviations is showing. 107. Okay, let me open my Google script. Okay. Mm. How much time it, it has taken? Okay, it has taken 1000, 1107 millisecond. Okay, so my limit is I have given 1000 millisecond. That's why it's showing that time mode has been occurred by. 107 milliseconds so it exceed exceeded my uh, limit okay that's the showing assistance okay let this is my groovy assistance and uh, those who are not aware of that groovy uh, let me tell you first give a basic info i mean uh, groovy similar kind of scripting language that is basically based on java uh, Just tell you guys. Good introductions. Okay, I mean, so for in the group, you can have uh, two type of logs like logs.info. Dot info that will print the log corresponding log and log. Dot error. So it will print as a error message. Okay. So log the data will generate the error message info if you want to print only the uh, uh, message string as a successful message. Okay. 
apart from that groovy also also contains uh, groovy is a object oriented programming language you can search you can get a lot of details about groovy if you search on the, in the net i mean what is groovy mm. what is uh, groovy script so we are getting that it's a dyna dynamic language with features similar to those of python ruby pal and small talk it can be used as a scripting language for java based platform okay is dynamically compiled to java virtual machine bytecode and interoperates with the other java code and library so groovy uses a java like curly bracket syntax so basically you can say that in uh, the apache groovy is a scripting powerful scripting language that you will be using in our soap ui and the language is basically based on java platform okay so i need to i am going to show you basic uh, groovy operations uh, simple like who are no already aware of the java we don't need to show you guys i mean who are already aware of the java this group is um, kind of similar with similar but the thing is that the syntax is uh, kind a uh, little bit different here i we don't need to use semicolon that like used to in java okay we don't need to use semicolon here and let me scroll the required is opening again and again basic operation if you see taking int a 30 v 40 addition normal addition it will do normally uh, module operation uh, sub revive operation it will do normal string con uh, concatenation it will do and increment and before and after increments normally i mean this way if you see the result log output it addition 70 uh, module operation 1 divided by 8 and string code so all that kind of things what we used to do in java can do also in groovy it's a similar kind of language so you are already if you are in java you can easily do it okay uh so first let me tell you uh, let me take you to my script only okay this is a script only that the request have uh, this is a xml request uh, that i passed using the xml rpc method i am just sending the request and uh, expecting the results so the res result has been uh, come for brazil so this is the goalkeepers for brazil that i am currently getting as a response now instead of uh, let me clear it okay so uh just close it Okay, so assertion I put it in their case for four assertions. I actually I don't need these four assertions. I only one assertion will be enough. So let me open my Groovy assertions and explain it step by step. Before I open the Groovy assertions, let me show you the response time for this 525 millisecond. Okay, 525 millisecond and Groovy assertion is passed. So let me open my Groovy assertion and try to explain your step by step. Okay. So first and foremost thing is the Groovy is that when you are defining the assertions, you need to import that. com dot evs soap white support dot xml holder that is you need to import and the next thing what i am doing i am defining the groovy utilities and the holder for validating the xml content so definition uh, defining the define is of is is a just like in java we have string uh, and integer uh, variable type so groovy there is also a type is a definition is object type okay so definition groovy utilities new com dot evr dot soap is support groovy utilities and i'm passing the context as argument here okay then we need to define the holder the groovy utilities dot get xml holder message exchange the response format things you need to know that inside the script test runner you can't use we will only be using with the log context and message exchange variables so that we can see it script is invoked with log context and message exchange variables so test runner object we will be using in the when you will be using groovy script as a step test step okay so after the definition uh, of the groovy utilities and holder we will be utilizing uh, the define the we need to define the namespace so namespace will be for my case uh, for my case this is my namespace uh, namespace let me just close it so uh, let me show you so this is the namespace http dot football hmm. pool dot database dot eu okay so this is the namespace you need to mention here whatever the namespace you are working so i am mentioning a namespace here this okay 
and that log dot input this way i mean only giving to make it more understandable okay the script result make it more understandable and definitions headers uh this uh, this one is to check if I getting the valid HTTP response or not. Okay, valid HTTP response. Suppose I have shown you guys I can utilize the assertion valid HTTP script assert valid HTTP code assertions. There is a uh, separate assertion is there, but I don't want to use it. I want to use it as a groovy. So inside the groovy, I can easily do it. Uh, how we can do it? Let me close it. If I see the response in the response, the header content. Let me do it. Uh, in the header content, we can see a uh, total eight type of header: the web service, date, content length, status. The status is HTTP 1.1.1200. Okay, okay. So I I need to check this is uh, the header is uh, 200 HTTP response coming 200 or not. Okay, that's what I'm doing inside my Groovy. Okay, I'm not putting a single assertion like valid HTTP assertion. I'm just checking these things inside my Groovy. Also, I'll be checking the date format also. Okay. So let me my groovy script let uh, how we have done it so first you have to define the headers so message exchange dot get response header so this is the response response header i'm getting and assert this particular uh, assert this particular header that i want should equal to the header status the header header uh, i mean property header value uh, header name is here status hash status hash Okay, so the header has to has this property should equal to equal with the this value. So I'm asserting if it is equal, then I I, I can uh, simply printing out the response is HTTP uh, the response is HTTP whatever the HTTP header response 200 okay okay. You can inside put it inside in the uh, if if else loop and you can just write it this way like uh, this is a valid uh, I mean. Uh, the HTTP response is coming for at least 200. Uh, we can also write this this way. And the response time, I'm printing a header date. So date is a property name. I'm printing as a header and date. Okay. And now the next thing is that checking SOAP request response, checking the valid SOAP response or not. See, there is options like adding assertions uh, SOAP response. Okay. We can add this as a compliance assertion. So how we can verify that we need to verify this is the envelope name should be uh, aligned with this http dot uh, colon slash slash um, uh, schemas dot xml soap dot org slash soap slash envelope this should be the exact namespace okay if it is if it is not then we can say this is not a valid soap response that's the same thing we are verifying not using that assertion we are verifying that inside the Google script so hold out the namespace soap that I'm fetching that will fetch the namespace value. This is I'm fetching and definition of node hold out dot get dom node. Okay, and we are providing the soap envelope value this way. Just do the same thing in your script also. Okay, this will simply verify this is a valid soap response or not. Now I'm checking if node not equal to null. Okay, so this is a valid soap response, and if it is not. Then we'll say this is this is an invalid soap response. This is a the if else loop I am using for soap assertion. Also, you can use the uh, if you want to fail your script, then just put assert. Okay, assert no not equal to null, and put the message as an invalid soap response. So if it is not valid soap response, it will fail the script, and this will get printed invalid soap response. Simply this will get printed. Okay, so put soap assertion if you want to bypass or uh, else put the this assertion is that node equal not equal to an assert will be hard assertions so it will fail your script okay so this way we can check uh, this this way we can check uh, the response is valid response or not now now we are going to check uh, the sla timeout assertion inside movie okay so for that uh, first we need to define a object sla i have taken message exchange or get time taken this will take the time whatever the total time the response took so for this case i can see the response time is 525 second okay 525 second and the limit is given 1000 millisecond the deviation will be 1000 uh, time taken minus 525 minus 1000 right 
so you can print printing the same total time taken millisecond against the time the limit i have given okay so if the time taken less than limit then i'm just printing the still a time out passed within the range okay time taken is less than limit so it is passed successfully within the range or if it is not then SLA timeout occurred. This will send us the error message printed in the script log. Along with it will also fail our script. As a deviation less than or equal to zero. So if if the limit is uh, thousand and it took uh, eleven hundred, so the deviation is minus hundred, right? So it is less than zero. So then it will fail your enter uh, so request. Okay, fail your script messaging that SLA timeout occurred. So this so you can do it. Let me just show you quickly. If I click on the run, it's showing the procession passed. Why? Let me get to that first. First is showing that response is actually okay, fine. Response time is showing current time, and this is a valid SOAP response. So the second one is showing this is a valid SOAP response, and total time taken 525 millisecond against 1000 millisecond. Okay, the time limit 1000 and it took 525, so it successfully passed. A time. SL timeout passed within range. 475 is the range. So within time limit, it has passed successfully. Now, if I put limit as a 200 only, if I run, if it, let me clear it. If I run this, so so it's showing SLA timeout occur and fail. Deviation is 325. So limit is see it's fail. When it will fail, it won't navigate to the next step. It will fail there. Okay. If you just click on OK, so see if you run the script, you will get an get this way. SLA timeout occur expressions division 325. So you don't have to use the SLA timeout expression separately. You can mention it inside the Groovy. Why it is failing? Cause total time taken 525 and the limit is 200. That is showing, and it is crossing the limit. So by deviation is here 325. So printing the deviations SLA timeout occurred exceed by 325 then it is failing due to the asset okay to fail if time out okay uh, let me put it normally thousand fine let me clear it it should be passed okay and the next thing is that i need to verify all the player count and names so for that uh, this means small. okay so this is my response okay and this is my script Okay, so this is my response. This is my script. So what I've written, defini uh, defining an object, total player holder dot count. This is the namespace that I already declared. M dot string. So M dot string that is fetching the total count. How, how many of M dot string is present? So M dot string containing the total player, right? So there are three with this tag. M dot string. There are three tag is present. So it's taking the count and this printing total goalkeeper found total player so currently the definitions total player containing count as a three so they are printing total goalkeeper found total i mean total player is three that that it will print okay so the result if you see it's printing total goalkeeper found three okay right and i'm asserting the same thing total player dot equals three i have three i have taken as a string value either you can take as an integer value also so if total player dot equals three uh, if there is total three players then it will pass or if it is not it will fail the script and it will display the count not matching okay if it is fail then it will show count not matching similarly if you don't want to use the screen i mean uh, integer variable like i'm putting three inside the integer where inside the code taking as the integer just you can do total player dot two integers here the total players are defining defini I mean, defining the total player object so this object need to be converted to integer value after that we can compare with the integer another integer so converting this total player to integer and dot equals taking it is three or not if it is three then it will pass successfully if it is not let me just write it uh, player count mismatch okay 
let me write it like 2 obviously it will fail let me just clear it run it player count mismatch okay if I click on OK in the group is we can see player count mismatch. Okay, so it's failing our test uh, script based on that. Okay, so let me put it as of now three. This is the total I'm comparing, and now I want to print all the goalkeeper's name that we have done using the x query right now i am running one loop for i i equal to 1 i less than equal to 3 3 you can also take from this one total player dot uh, equals dot get size you can also take i already know here the counts i have taken as a 3 you will be taking this as a total player dot 2 integer okay you can also write this one this will work fine total player 2 integer if i run that person is fast okay so if it is less uh, the, taking a for look and it is getting incremented one by one and see what i have done for the player the player name is located uh, all goalkeepers result then m string then this is the index this is the first index second index third index okay so the index i am passing incrementing starting from one two three this way okay so it will phase the index uh, if you go to the first index and it asserting first time asserting the player name is equals or not if it is not equals a different player found then i will fail your test script okay so the assertion player dot equals daniel subasik or player dot equals ivan Bharjik or player dot equals lobri kalini i mean it is um, i mean equal it is the same player that i expecting i'm expecting then it will pass the relevant step and it will print the player name of the particular tag Okay, it will print the name. I mean, player name of the particular tag. So if I just run, it, quickly run it, uh, so you can see three presses and pass successfully. And uh, asserting goalkeeper's name, player one, player two, player three, all the players have been successfully displayed. Uh, let me just close it. Okay, so this is uh, the groovy assertion. I mean. Uh, so we can see utilizing the Groovy assertion, we don't need to import so many uh, different different type compliance and property assertions. Like you can easily navigate, you can easily avoid the content assertion, not content assertion, SLA assertions, valid HTTP assertions. It's easy to value so Presmos or not. This assertions, XPath assertion, X Query assertions, and checking SLA timeout assertion. Okay, so almost eight and ten assertions can be avoided using a single one using a single one if you use the groovy scripting as a scripting version you can easily do it uh, i mean you should have some basic knowledge about the core java and there is a lot of tutorial about groovy in the uh, google if you search it you will get it so utilizing the groovy script assertions uh, we can we can uh, just simplify our uh, test assertions i mean so we don't know to we need to we don't need to provide 14 15 or 16 assessment just only one assessment will be enough and thing is that we can also include Groovy as a test step let me show you for that okay so test step this is a Groovy skit I can also do uh, for the second test suite I have taken one Groovy script So if you use Groovy in the test step, see this assertion, this is not an assertion, this is exactly I want to run our test step, whatever I am defining here, okay. I mean, uh, some test step I do not want to run, even if you in your case, some test script you don't want to run, in a, I mean you are having uh, 10 test case in a suit, test suit, but you want to run some particular test case, so you can uh, do it easily but if you are something you have you are having more than 10 step and you want to run some particular test step you can do it easily by utilizing the groovy script as a test step so so difference is that i mean if you groovy script as a test step uh, here we can see the script is invoked with log context and paste variable so you can here 
use the test in a variable okay so the ruby scripting as a test step i will cover later when i will be creating a new environment and i will do the conditional flow okay as of now i am uh, i have just shown you guys how to utilize the ruby script other assertions in place of all other assertions so all the major assertion can be covered inside a single assertion okay so for each and every script only one assertion will be fine okay so that's all for uh, today guys i mean if you have any questions uh, let me know regarding ruby or uh, if you have any questions uh, regarding how to fetch all those elements uh, just let me know and comment below i'll be happy to help you on that okay so thank you for watching